Hey, what is up everyone? My name is Imani LaRussa and today we're gonna go over part two of how I made this. So today we're going to be doing an in-depth breakdown of scene two. Yesterday we did more of the pre-production along with scene one, but today we're going to be focusing on the transition cut from scene one to scene two and how I did the animation for that. So let's hop into it. I think it's super important to make sure that you have your transitions laid out in your animatic before you start animating. Help save a lot of additional work. So scene one going into scene two, we have this match cut of this pupil turning into into the egg and if you don't know what a match cut is i highly recommend watching ben marriott's match cut tutorial because he explains it perfectly so the idea is that you want your animation motion to match going into the next scene but i think specifically why i wanted to go into this shot was because i wanted to emphasize how important it is to use these shape layers so as we could see the eye comes out and then it dilates out um, into like a wider pupil and then it positions down. You see the gradient from white to like this dark blue kind of stay consistent even when the pupil grows out. So I was able to do that by changing the edit gradient under the shape layer. So rather than creating multiple layers using solids, you would only need one shape layer and edit this gradient. Because if you just had a solid on top of this, the fill would go over the gradient and you'd don't want to lose that you want to make it seem like it's expanding so for this first pose we have this and then we go into the dilating and it's now this so we expand more out to the blue area without losing that three color gradient inside it's little things like that that make your workflow faster which makes you a more advanced animator so next we'll move into the child scene the baby scene the idea with this scene is that when we're in our baby stage we are so protected and glorified center of attention in the moments of us blossoming and becoming a conscious human so let's start from from the bottom of this comp, um, we'll go into the walls. So this is why it is important to make sure that you know what your transitions are going to be before you start animating. So I had made this composition a lot bigger than the comp that my final comp is in, which is 1080 by 1920. And the reason I did that was because I knew that the transition of the rotation needed to exceed Seed the original 1080 by 1920 so that it didn't get cut off. I also created this because I didn't know if I was going to be zoomed out, but that's why this is here, but you don't really see it in the final. And then let's move into the vines or the leaves. I wanted to create the motion on them that seemed organic and not like computer generated. So what I did was to each of the individual leaves, I added a, a wiggle expression to the rotation. So so they all had uh, different movements on it. But my big thing was that I wanted the vines to move as well. And in order to do that with the leaves, uh, one way that I initially thought of was uh, pre-comping everything and then adding a puppet tool to it. So this is the issues with using the puppet tool on a comp that has already moving assets to it. Say I start adding these points to the vine and then I create the motion to it. You could already see that it is cutting and distorting and that's because it is taking the original points of the leaves and vines and it's using that to like pin it into place but because it's constantly moving it's trying to hold on to the original shape of it or the original form of it and that's why you're getting these weird distortions so the way that i was able to go about that was instead using the create knolls from paths um so i grabbed my original vine which was just this uh stroke shape layer 
and I created a path with that. And then I went to create knolls from path. I highlighted my path and it created knolls along this. So I have these knolls already created. So I could just show you what it looks like on top of the vine. So you could see that all of these knolls are attached to the vine itself. And so then I just grabbed bunches of the leaves and parented those onto like close by areas of knolls. And this is really cool because the motion is moving slightly and we could create more motion by adding this movement on the vines and not just the leaves itself. Next, I wanna get into this really cool animated um, metallic look. So I had the same look on scene one with the hands because I wanted it to look like it was uh, 3D, but it's actually 2D. And it low-key reminds me of the glow aura from Hereditary. So in order to get that, I added a CC glass. Um, I turned the displacement down and I changed the light direction so it looks like it's constantly being lit all around. So I'm just going to create like a simple shape. I like adding colors onto this because I want the highlights to kind of um, reflect off of it. If you're using just white and black, I feel like it doesn't get as cool as a trippy effect as having uh, like multiple colors on it. This just has a, a simple shape layer with some turbulent displacement and a fast blur with a blending mode on it. So now I'm going to add my CC glass. Once you start messing around with some of these settings, you could get some really cool trippy effects in it. And what I really liked about this was being able to change the, the light direction on it. And now it just looks way cooler to me. It has this like that shiny reflective metallic look and I'm a big fan of it. But I think what's also cool is that it um, makes this 2D object look 3D. And it was just with some simple shape layers. So this would be like kind of a cool eyeball if you wanted to make it into that. Maybe that will be my next NFT, who knows? The crack in the egg and the flower was really easy, just parenting those on top of the egg, just to add a little bit of um, a position on the movement. It made it look like the egg was rotating as it's turning. And the movement on the flower, I wanted to highlight because as the egg is falling, I wanted to make it look a lot lighter than the egg itself, like it's very heavy. So I think when you're animating, you should always take in consideration real physics so as the egg is falling, there's a huge bend in the flower because the wind is pushing it against the fall of the egg. And then moving into the transition from this scene into the next scene, I kept the background transparent on the second window so that the second scene can live below it. And I just had the next scene uh, separated from the foreground to the background because they needed to live on different planes in the 3D space. Scene three is gonna be a little more heavy tomorrow using joysticks and sliders along with Cinema 4D. And that's gonna be it for us. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, this is part two of a five part series. So tomorrow I'm gonna be posting part three. If you're watching this from the future, then the video is already up. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. Notifications are on and yeah, have a great day.